Hey, everybody. I just wanted to start tonight's show a little bit on a somber note. As we know, Anthony Bourdain unfortunately passed away uh, last week. And so like everybody else, I was stunned. I've been a big fan of his for a long time, ever since I first read Kitchen Confidential. Uh, I actually had the pleasure of meeting him uh, several years ago uh, at a book signing, and he was really gracious. He was uh, really cool. He read a little bit of his book. He was very candid with us. Uh, he even seemed a little bit nervous at times, but it was a great uh, meeting of the guy, uh, somebody who I really admired. And I loved his show. It was so real. It was so authentic. He just went to these countries. He uh, enveloped himself in the culture. He tried the food. The guy was open to anything. And that made him such a welcome guest uh, to people all over the world and to an audience who was learning about these places, uh, most likely for the first time. And he just narrated his shows with such eloquence, with humor, with wit, a little sarcasm from time to time. And it just really gave you a really interesting window into places of the world through a voice that had never really uh, been around before. He came around at a time that I think we were all hungry for that as cable was expanding at that period in the early 2000s. And so first through the Travel Channel and then now through CNN, we really got a chance to see the world through his eyes. And I will forever miss him. I'll miss his show. I'll miss his wit. And I just think he was a great, great human being, uh, one of my heroes. And I just hope he's at peace. And I'm definitely thinking about his family now, especially his daughter. But Anthony, uh, thank you for everything you did for all of us and how much you meant to, to me. And I will miss you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very pleased to be here before you to introduce myself and my cohort this evening. I am, of course, the Lord of Darkness. I do want to compliment my friends on planet Earth. Yes, we all know that the trajectory of human existence has gone into my realm, that we shall all be on that ubiquitous highway to hell very shortly, thanks to the supreme leaders of this fine and trance, messed up country that we all reside. Of course, myself, I am universal. I am the god of darkness. I have come here before you to stand behind you, to tell you something I know everything about, because evil is my life. That's right, folks. Anyway, I would, in fact, like to introduce myself. Yes, I am the lord of darkness. No applause, please. You may stop. Yes, see, I have, uh, I have palms of whiteness there. Uh, as uh, many of my friends do. So therefore, I'd like to introduce this gentleman to my right. He is just a man in a costume, unlike myself. He is the slum lord. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your kindness. You're very nice open, and I appreciate your sentiments. Oh. I am the slum lord, and I am here to help you co-host this discussion about cinema, about film. In particular, this evening, we are going to focus on a realm that I know you are very familiar with. Oh, of course. The world of horror, oh, horror yes. films. Tonight, we will be discussing oh, many, many incredible. different types of yes. horror films. Yes. So this will be a very good show for those of you that enjoy horror movies. If you don't, well, this is the wrong show for you. And if you cannot understand this, man, please remove your head from your anus. And perhaps his clarity shall be more severe. I have but a slight myself, impediment. I cannot understand a bloody word he says. I have a slight speech impediment. I apologize to you. I will do the best that I can no to rectify. So, As I say, evil has become us. <coughs> we are what we are because I have a frog within my throat. <coughs> oh, that's not Pardon the only me. thing you have in your throat. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. I've that's heard easy. the stories. Uh, but I'm bummed. All right, we're going to begin our beloved show. Here. Let That's us do right. it. Uh, we are subbing for the, the, the usual hosts of this blimey show called Phil Banter. I am the Lord of Darkness. Let me first do my small ritual, if I may. Ah, Spiritus Sanctum, ah, Bers, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, Please, get the hold right. of yourself, sir. I am prepared. I am prepared to begin the show now. So we're going to start. We're going to review a film uh, that has overtaken the airwaves and the cinematic world, uh, known as Hereditary. Ah, uh, yes, Hereditary. 
A very, very interesting horror film. It was a big success at Sundance, I've heard. Yes, indeed. And now it is before you on the screens at your local neighborhood theater. Would you like uh, to describe the premise, or shall I do the honors? Well, the premise is such that um, basically we have uh, we have very many premises. We have the opening of our film is about a grandmama who perishes. I had nothing to do with it, by the way. And she died of natural causes. We learned that within the first second of the film. Precisely. Let's not get into any spoilers, though. Uh, there are no spoilers to really give, if I may be so sublime. After seeing the film, I'm not sure that I know what the spoilers are. Uh, however, the film is such that we have the brilliant Tony Collette there with the amazing and, and breathtaking, uh, uh, whatever his name Gabriel is. Gabriel Byrne. Gabriel Byrne, of course, who we always loved in some of the Cohen brothers. He was in uh, Miller's Crossing. I always loved the man, but he's a great actor within his own right. Um, however, this film goes into a strange, perplexing uh, metamorphosis. And of course, I never metamorphosis. I didn't like. But it goes into a strange, uh, there are deaths within this film. I don't want to give too much away. Yes, let's not reveal uh, that. However, I'm going to say right off the bat that I was not very fond of this film. I felt that it lacked in so many uh, areas of pure horror. There was only a shudder or two for myself. You know, I was thinking the same thing. And also, uh, one of the kisses of death for any film is if the audience begins to chuckle uh, amidst the, uh, the screening, and I did find this to be the case. Uh, people were chuckling and laughing, and I, of course, began to chuckle with them. I, I found the film a little disjointed. It moves around a lot, and many things happen. There is a young daughter in the film who is portrayed by a very young girl. Her name is Millie Shapiro. No one can understand what you just said. Her name is Millie Shapiro. Millie? 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 Millie Vanilli. Millie Shapiro. Like Millie Jackson, the singer? Uh, yes, yes. And then Shapiro, like O.J.'s lawyer. Millie Shapiro. Oh, Didn't right. O.J. have an oil, a lawyer named Shapiro? Yeah, I think that was O.J.'s lawyer. Maybe. Millie Shapiro. I there got to she say is. about this young girl for one moment, and I don't mean to be rude, but she must be one of the oddest people I've ever witnessed in my life. Wait. Much makeup is on her face there. I don't know. She oh, has yes. a very strange no, no, appearance, no. You, my friend. If you go into IMD. I was on IMD. Yeah, and there, she doesn't quite look like that. I thought, like in that picture right there, no, she, she looks, looks like atrocious. somebody. I wish I knew who it was. She looked there, like uh, something I don't ever want to see no, in a no, dark she corner. she looks like a person that I know in my life. Really? I don't know who it is. Oh. I am the Lord of Darkness, not the Lord of Well, of, you know many people. Light. I do know many How people. How can you keep track of them all? I can't. Anyway, did I love this film? I did not. I did not love this film. I walked out of the theater. The ending is so perplexing and so completely off the wall. I left the film, I have to say, disjointed and, and saddened because I thought that there were certain premises within this film that made it and could have made it great. However, as the Lord of Darkness, I have no power over things that have already been. I can only change that which is to come. So unfortunately, I was, I was saddened to play with my popcorn most of the time and uh, to just simply sit there and uh, idolize this film in, so do you in recommend less the movie? enchanting uh, do, appreciation. Do you recommend the films for people to go see? I do not recommend for people to go see this film. I do believe disappointment is at the end of the journey. I do believe, however, that there are setups, there are certain things within this particular horror film that we have not seen before. So therefore, I'm torn. I'm, I really am torn. I liked part of it. I like part of it, and yet the other part of me is torn, and I, I don't like it. But uh, did I like it's, it's, a, it's a two and a half, almost a three star, but I can't go three stars on this film. Okay. Can you? Well, I'm going to say I generally agree with you about it being uh, roughly about a two and a half star film. However, um, the, re the, the main reason that I would recommend this film to somebody to go see is for Toni Collette's very exceptional performance, in my humble She's opinion. She's wonderful, I have to say. I really liked her in this film. I like her in every film, let's be honest. You do? I do. She's wonderful. She's wonderful. She's a workhorse. The woman doesn't stop. But I thought she was exceptional in this movie. All right. She is the anchor of this film. Um, and I thought Gabriel Byrne also was excellent. I mean, the whole cast is very good. Yeah. They do what they can with this, this film. Um, but, you know, this film, as I expected going into it, 
um, ends up being one of these movies that... Now, this kid right there. Yes. We just saw him in Jumanji. Alex Wolf is his name. I, uh, and he was also one of the bombers in the uh, the, the uh, Boston Marathon bombing film that came out oh, last year, oh, Patriot's right. Day. Oh, he yeah. was one of them. Indeed. But back to my point. This film was being promoted, as they always do, as the scariest film in decades. Yes. This generation's exorcist. Bullshit. I totally agree. Stop it with that. No. Stop giving us false hope for an amazing Pure, movie. unsublimed menorah. They did the same thing with the Blair Witch Project. I have you to agree stop with you. It? It's a cool movie. It has some interesting things going on. It's very unsettling. The unsettling nature, the disturbing nature grows as the film reaches its climax. But it is by no means on par with The Exorcist. No. However, not many films can be. But you know what? It could have been. It could have been. I, I think agree this with film you. It could have been if they had only stayed true I to know. the actual story that they set within the beginning. It, but yeah. they don't. They veer away, they veer away, they veer away again. And next thing you know, we've gone into an area that is just completely foreign to us. The film ends on a very unsettling but confusing and I, I, note. And I feel like the, the, the last 20 minutes or so, as you say, it goes into territory that I feel like they just wrote in there to give some excitement to the ending of the movie. The there book, are characters, let's just yeah, say, climbing true. the walls, you could say. Yes. I think they just threw that in there because nothing up until that point in the film was going in that direction. Um, you know, the film is about spiritualism, is about Satanism, and all these things, all these ideas are thrown at you. How dare you, I Satanism? I dare say what I want. I suppose it was. They were worshipping you in some way in this film. Well, thank you. It's always nice to be recognized uh, no. for any reason. Take what you can get in this world. I but I will say this, I recommend the film for Tony Collette. You don't need to run out to the theater, but I'm giving it a mild yes for her especially, and for some of the interesting scenes that are on display in this film. But it is by no means, do not believe the hype. I totally agree. Yes, it was unsettling. It, it really just it lost its own way uh, amongst the, the droppings of the breadcrumbs and trying to get us to the end of the film, unfortunately. However, the sequence that occurs, let's just say there's something that occurs after a party. That whole few moments there were pretty tense. Some of the best moments of the film, I would say. But overall, the film... Uh. Uh, it's not what they are well, trying are to get you to believe. Film, but, uh, uh, some of the deaths are, are well earned. There are some yes. good scenes. Uh, and but there overall, is some horror there, there is. after the deaths, but unfortunately... But it's not we, this, like, oh, you know, oh, some, of the, some of the things that I read were saying, some people, this movie, they cannot prepare for this film. No. Hogwash. Rubbish. Uh, as Drop. Your, as your lord Stop of darkness, I, I have to proclaim uh, this film had no light for me. It's not this and, big uh, epic. I was most distraught with its uh, with its end results and so forth. And uh, I'd like to now move on to our next journey. Yes. Yeah, so where, what we are going to do for the rest of the show? Yes. We are going to be meandering in the world of horror. We are oh, going to be discussing the world of horror. Horror films that yeah. you is that why you're dressed like that? Well, I like this. I like being. I like coming onto the show in this garb. You do? I do. It gets me out of the dumpster a couple of days a week, I'll tell you that much. I can say that again. But, but um, we are going to hang out in the horror realm. We are going to discuss films that you are probably aware of, maybe films that you are not aware of. But we are going to be talking about horror nonetheless. And I believe there are some very nice collages of horror characters that we sorry, can maybe I can't show give you my audience. autograph. I can't give you my autograph now, I'm sorry. Get it to me later, please, for my nephew. Perhaps later. Oh, uh, really? Thank you. All right, so we're also, going to go through the annals of horror. Yes, we will. Oh, there's a wonderful poster. There's there. a wonderful little montage well, of horror characters. Where did you get characters. that? Well, you know, I stumbled along it on the interweb. Oh, the dark web? The dark web, exactly oh, the dark nice. web. I, you know, I was evicting three families on the way here, and oh, I said, good. I like this photo. Let me, let me send this yeah, to the well, Be Terrific guys. wonderful of you. Uh, but anyway, as we were saying about horror, we all know some of the big hitters like Psycho. We're very familiar with that film. We are indeed. We're very familiar, as we mentioned a couple moments ago, The Exorcist. Yes. Uh, we all know the Saw franchise. I think that franchise has been uh, beaten like a dead horse. Yes. I like that little uh, scarf you're wearing there, by the way. Oh, thank you so much. It, it appeals to me. It does? Would it you does. like to have it? I would like it one day. I'd like to wear yeah, it. Yeah, try it. Uh, thank would you. you like yes. to put it I'd like to put it on. Maybe yeah, later. Maybe later. Yeah, go ahead. You can, can put I it take on. it from me like this? Yeah, go ahead. Put it on. Let me try it on here. Oh, I like this. I can get used to this. What do you All right, think? that's enough. Do you want it back? I do. All right. 
Thank you. And there's a strange new world that you enter when you say, I do. I do. I do. Well, I must say, uh, it's time to talk about our first horror film of the evening. Yes. It's a throwback, a flashback to 1931. Oh, no. To Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Frederick March won Best Actor. He did. In that very year. The first of two Academy Awards that gentleman had won. He did. 1946, I believe, was the for other the, the, for the best years, years of, of our, our lives. lives. Which, yes, uh, very a true classic indeed. film in its, in its own right. Absolutely. You know, I must tell you about this film. I recently saw it for the first time. Ah. Mr. Dale Smith recommended this film. Who? Based Mr. Dale Smith. Why, that little bastard. The man that usually occupies your seat. No, oh, yes. But right now he's having some pubs removed in an alleyway in Queens. Uh, that could be, you know. Yes. He, he, he has an have, issue uh, back there. He has other things to do from time to time. He does. But, yes, let us talk about this film. This but is I, a brilliant it is, but I want, but performance. Like, I wanted but to please. say, like you were saying uh, a moment ago, uh, it's a wonderful film, uh, but Frederick March is the heart of this film. He this man is earned outrageous. That I had heard that this was one of the greatest performances of all time. No question. And it is. Absolute. And I was so impressed with the transformation Absolute. that they did back in 1931. He's climbing the bloody walls, Wonderful. for God's sake. It's incredible. It was very effective for the time period. I and it do still want holds you to up. do something on your own, however. Now yes. that you've seen this film, yes. I want you to go and pick up the the next version, I believe it was 1936, with Spencer Tracy. Well, as also it, does it, the very the, same role with Ingrid Bergman. The disc that I rented from my corner library yes. has both versions. No! It does! <laughs> Yes. Yes. Oh, it has both versions. Oh, yeah, oh, yes. Oh, oh, it does. It's all dead. Oh, my God. Oh. Are you okay, sir? I'm terribly sorry. What is occurring? Something overcame me there. I, I don't know what it was. You qu gave me quite the startle. Oh, I did. Very well. Uh, but you should watch both versions because I'm Spencer's version is quite uh, traceable, if you get my comic pun. I really enjoyed him also, but Frederick steals the bloody show. Look at that face. Look at those teeth. I love oh the makeup. Oh, my God. Very well done. It's a brilliant performance, absolute, no question. I have to agree. There's just a loveliness about this. this and this film, because of its age, the tinting, the black, the white, there is just a horrific uh, edge to Mr. Hyde here that... I agree. It really set the precedent for years and years it and did. years to come. And the terror and that he put really equal. I know, and the terror he put that young woman through was amazing. He really tortured her throughout the whole film. Yes. How about those scenes when he's running through the streets of London with the <laughs> fog? It's beautiful. I love it. The cinematography—they really outdid My themselves God. on that one. Incredible. Who directed the film? Do you know offhand? Oh, uh, I do. I have it here. His name is Ruben Marmolia. Oh. And he made a bunch well, of other films I've never heard of. Well, very well. Uh, but he did a he wonderful is. job with this one. Yeah, yeah. He almost looks like Cesar Romero there. I don't know if you uh, know Cesar. I know Cesar Romero. Cesar was the Joker in the uh, Adam West Batman. I know. 65, 66 circa. Yes, he was. But uh, very well, we cannot recommend uh, uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde enough to you. It really it's is a, a brilliant classic. film. Go Seek back into the archive. Out. That's right. Everything is just not, uh, you know, uh, television and movies of the day. We have brilliant performances that have been taking place. We, we do. should all go back and go into our hearts, seek into the depths of evil, <laughs> and see this film for what it is. Because you it's need a to know what brilliant piece of work. You need to know what came before. Yes. To get us to where we are now. Uh oh. I just realized. What is occurring? I do believe I've uh, I've mistaken the. Uh, did you remove your microphone, uh, sir? I do think that may like be the assistance? case. So here's what I'll do. I'm just simply going to do this. Why don't you let me help you? No, forget about okay. it. Okay. Now, we can move on now. They're not going to be able to hear you, my friend. Why not? Let me fix that for you. But why Why should What are friends for? If they can't oh, fix well, your microphone, you, know, you knock it that's off. That's so true, With I your suppose. enthusiasm. Uh, just put it right on my robe, if can you I will. Can I put it on your nose? There we you go. may, if you would. Thank you so much. You're welcome, sir. That's my you know, good I deed for the I appreciate day. what you've done there for me, and I'd like to shake your paw. Nah, just kidding. How dare you? Very Leave well. Me hanging. All Leave right, so there hanging. we go. No, here we go. Oh, this side. With you. All right. So let's move on. Unless no, let's... you have anything else you want to add. No, nothing. Okay. Well, our next film is from 1995. We jump many decades to seven. Uh, oh God. I would say that's this... quite a jump. I would say so. That's a leap. This film is a classic, a crime classic, but it is really a horror film at its core. It is. If you haven't seen Seven, get out from the rock you're under and go check it out. Hmm. 
It's yes. about two detectives yes, absolutely. in a very rainy city who are investigating a serial killer who is using the seven deadly sins as his motivation. Correct. And we see all these gruesome deaths throughout the film. And it is just a, a masterpiece by Mr. David Fincher, the film's director. The bad person in this film. Let's not tell them that. In case yeah, they I understand that. But this is a very good pre-performance by this particular actor. I agree actor, with you. Uh, who was now, unfortunately, blacklisted by Hollywood well, this past year. Well, let's not give it away. I'm only giving a very slight clue there, yes. if you will. Yes, yes, but, yes. But uh, there, uh, there is great performances here. And David Fincher is perfect. Uh, dark essence is most definitely on display here I and would most agree. absolutely uh, a brilliant piece of cinematic work i must say brad pitt one of his first films there's a lovely little winner paltrow paltrow up there morgan freeman and, uh, as we uh, know this it. before it's really a kind of a frightening film the it ending works. is spectacular ah. i love it in all and you respects. know the studio wanted to change that ending to something a little bit more cheerful <laughs> brad pitt threatened to walk if they did oh good so thank god for that and we got oh, this good, nice good. ending god bless mr pitt this is a wonderful film. In my opinion, I think this is uh, still, I think, David Fincher's best film. I agree with you. Fight Club right. is a great film as well. It is. I love The Social Network yes. and a few other films. But this really is his masterpiece <clears throat> to date. It's quite wonderful. It's a wonderful film. There are other character actors in this film, like John C. McGinley and Arlie Emery. Mm. You have Richard Roundtree. Just a top-notch cast in this film. What other David Fincher films, though, do you enjoy? Well, I just said, I love The Social Network. I love, uh, you know what other one that I love that nobody ever really talks about? The Game with Michael Douglas. I love The Game. 1997. How about Alien 3? I love that. I like Alien 3. Alien 3. Quite a bit. Uh, Benjamin Button was a good film. I agree. I also liked... And the uh, movie he did with uh, uh, Ben Affleck. Uh, oh, Gone Girl. Gone That's a Girl. good film as well. Great little piece of work. I like that. And I also like... Uh, Zodiac was good. It was a one-time viewer for me. Uh, I've but seen it, it twice well now. Done. I've seen it twice. It's, 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 he he it's, is just it's, a unique it's filmmaker. Good. And I'm a big fan of his show, uh, House of Cards. And there he also did Mindhunter. Absolutely. Another good program on Netflix. The truth indeed. This is just a masterpiece. It's horrifying. It is. It's interesting. It's frightening. There's great ass, great acting. It's wonderful. It's just it's the gruesome. crime scenes alone are worth the whole uh, price of admission. There are in each just one gets brilliant. more and more horrific. Uh, oh my god. How about sloth? How disgusting <coughs> sloth, sloth, sloth is. Well. is. How about gluttony? Gluttony. Oh my god. I think I have a picture of both possibly. Oh, uh, do we? Well, that's think, sloth. I don't it's know where gluttony may be. Film if you have, do we have not gluttony seen there? seven. You are is missing that, out is, on is a that, classic. Is that gluttony? I, I don't know if I can see here. That looks like sloth. That's gluttony right there. I have to wear these shades so people don't recognize me. I know it's tough. You know, I go celebrity. down the streets and people think they know me. And but as long as I have these on, I find there's gluttony right over there. Uh huh. As long as I have these shades on, no one bothers me and leaves me alone. Well, I'm happy to hear that. That's sir. always important. I know it's uh, not easy being a public figure. Yeah, this, you know, you're so right. Hated as much you know, as you. Uh, you know, I try and bring as much debauchery and as much evil as I possibly can. I don't have to do much work anymore, though. Uh, our present uh, leader say, congratulations of these many on countries. I know it's quite a quite a insatiable a a world we live now. Yeah, my brain just spins thinking about the luscious irony of pure evil that comes out within this world on a daily basis now. It's just incredible. It's a shame. Me. I tell you, we are on a highway to hell. Could you do the chords? Highway to Angus, where are you when we need you, my friend? All right, let us go. And now we move to our next film. Do you want to film. move on to the next film? Yes, what is it? The next film is 1999's The Sixth Sense. Oh, a lovely film. You know, this is a fun film. Uh, the big, still, I'd say the biggest film that M. Night Shyamalan, the writer and director, has done. Yeah, well, I think he we... peaked early. Because uh, that was his best, <laughs> I think it's still his best film. Uh, I did like The Visit, though. The, vi the, the Visit. Visit. The Visit? Yeah, that oh, was you know, his I latest film. I never got film. around to see that one. That is a great little piece of work. I thought Split was pretty good. Was uh, Split was James excellent. James McAvoy. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I like uh, no, Unbreakable wonderful. and I like Signs. Uh, I like Signs also. But I don't also, care for the, the Village. And I don't oh, care for Lady God. in the Water. Oh, and God. I don't oh. care for The Happening. Oh, The Happening is one of the Nothing worst films ever. Nothing was happening in The Happening. I remember when that film came out and Mark Wahlberg we actually laughing. said, Oh, this is a wonder. This is a scary film. Oh, he so established himself. Oh, my God. What a piece of hardcore garbage. And as the Lord of Darkness, that's quite a statement from I applaud from M. Knight for trying something different, but it didn't work, unfortunately. Unfortunately. 
But uh, let's get back to The Sixth Sense. Another film with a wonderful Tony well, Collette. Well, Miss Tony Collette uh, really kind of hit the grade. She was in, of course, a wonderful little film back in the uh, back in the 90s, I believe it was, called Muriel's Wedding. That was her big break. That was her big break. And that's a great little movie if you've she never seen that. Bride. Oh, she's just wonderful. She's uh, excellent. I, I really do love her. But this film, The Sixth Sense, is just... Haley Joe Law's been there, can see dead people, as we all know. I see dead people. He's very good child oh actor. Oh, my yeah. God. You know, he's one of He still does a lot of work now. He's very I busy I see him still. constantly. He was on Silicon Valley last season. Yeah, he's now a, a little bit of a pudge. And he's got a big beard. He's got a, a... Well, not always. I've seen him in other things, but he's he's maintained this particular cherubic, angelic kind of face. He uh, was in uh, Kevin Smith's Tusk. Oh, he was, He indeed. showed up in that film. Yes, and absolute. But he's been, I say he's probably done three or four films in bit parts. I've seen him just recently he's very in busy another though. film that he made. And there he is, the little, little boy that he is. Uh, this, of course, Bruce Willis. Uh, there's a huge, there's a huge twist in this there film is, that yes. is so amazing and so wonderful. And you know what? If you've not seen this film, you need to. And it, hopefully it you have classic. not heard the ending because the ending is just. I will say this about this film. I remember seeing it in the theater. And thinking to myself while it was on that, okay, this is a good movie, but it's not a great film. But, but then, then you get the, ending, the and then, ending, and then you just you're sitting in awe. Oh my goodness, I did I not know. see that coming, and it was it very rips nice. your heart right out of it, your body. It did in some ways. I know, but you'd have to assume I have a heart to begin with, which well, I that's don't true, have. Which you certainly don't, being the slum I lost lord. my heart uh, many years ago. I know, that's so true. That's oh, a yes. story Let's from talk another show. The sides of our mouth like this, yes, okay. Uh huh. Well, that's what Bruce Willis is doing right there in that picture. You yes, notice his hands on his face. He looks very bored in that shot. And that's the lovely uh, Miss, uh, what is her name? Her name is Olivia Williams. Ah, yes. A she British went on actress. To do, uh, British actress, quite wonderful, actually. I would agree. I've always loved Brits. And uh, I haven't yes, being a Brit, pop Brit myself. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I've always, uh, I've always kind of sided with the Brits, you know. Uh -huh. But, uh, all right, let's move right on here. Yeah, we can move along. We are going to now jump to the year 2005. Oh. To a film called yes, The Descent. Oh, The Descent. The Descent. Oh, this is, is a, a scary little film. Yeah, in this movie. There was The Descent me. too, also. Yes, you know I have not, not seen nearly it. as good. Not nearly as no. good. Then I won't bother. No, don't bother. But, but I gotta no. say, this movie scared the shit out of me when I saw it. Oh my god! It's gruesome. I'm glad I it's wasn't in that violent. room. It's suspenseful. It's horrifying. It's frightening. It's terrifying. Pick your adjective. And this for you, that's, quite a, that's quite a film. It's about a bunch of women that are cave divers. They are exploring a cave. <laughs> they are indeed. And they come along some And these little creatures, creatures, these strange little creatures, horrifying, almost like gremlins, if prehistoric you Prehistoric-looking demonic creatures. Oh, they're very frightening. They begin to feast on these women one there by one. There they are. There, there they are. I think I saw this kid at McDonald's yesterday. I thought that was the one that was on your Tinder page the other day. <laughs> you know, but I think you I swiped, swiped to the other side. I swiped left on that one, yes. Good for you. That was a good call. That was a good call. But this movie is very effective. Check but I'll it tell out. you this. Most of the women that are in this movie... I'd swipe right for. They're very attractive They're very ladies. attractive ladies. There's the cast. I'll tell you, this is really a wonderful little movie. It's, it's a, it's a, really it's a chick flick with a twist. It's a chick horror flick, but my God. It's a gem. It, it really is a, a, a scary little film. James Cameron then later on produced a film that was semi-similar. He had people caught down in that like a... That was a 3D film. Yes. It, no, I, it wasn't. I thought it was released in 3D no, no, when it sir. came out. Yes, no, it no. did. No. It was called Sanctum. It was being held in as a 3D film. Oh, I don't ever recall the 3D version of yeah, it. Yeah, I remember the trailers, I'm pretty sure. But I do recall that he did a, a film in a very similar... Sanctum, it's called. Uh, yeah, Sanctum? Yes. Okay, we can't understand you because it, it sounds I think like only you're having trouble. You have some sort of uh, thing in your mouth that I won't uh, make a reference to. But, uh, you know, I, I do believe that this film, as the fourth goer and forefront, of a movie such as Sanctum, this really is the movie to it's watch. It's excellent. If you've not seen The Descent, we're Shut trying to bring out. you, by the way, we are trying to bring you films that we have not always uh, been to the forefront of horror. Uh, many times you hear about films, we're staying away from Psycho, we're staying away from The Exorcist, we're staying away from the biggie, the, big ones. the you know, Alien, and et cetera. We're trying to give you some films so that you can kind of go into your library, into your Amazon, into your computer, onto your internet, 
internet and you can get, borrow or steal whatever it is you need. But some of these films we're recommending today are most definitely within our hearts and souls of the true horror buff that I certainly am. This imposter is not a horror man by any means. I like horror, I just no, don't love it. No, you're an imposter. No, I like horror. I just don't love it like you do. But there I are certain watch. films within the genre that I love. Like Seven. I love Seven. I love a lot of these films. But I just don't love the genre as much as you do. Uh, that's probably true. But The true. Descent is an excellent film. And that's why I suggested All that we right. discuss it. Uh, take a chill pill and, and watch your Netflix or whatever you have to do. Why don't you leave your I think your we can move on to, to the next one. Well, I had a thought I was going to express. But you're making me... Oh, what I was just going to say. All of these films that we are discussing this evening, uh, in terms of our horror segment, yes. you can watch them all on Amazon. So fear not, they're a fingertip away. Oh, my heavens. With that so said, if you're a Prime member, you can watch them for free. Unless you may. Oh, how which is exciting wonderful. is that? So the next film is Drag Me to Hell from 2009. Oh, Drag Me to Hell, a Sam, Sam Raimi. Directed by Sam Raimi. man who Raimi. done The Evil Dead. He did the first three Spider-Mans, of course. He did Dark Man. Uh, this girl is almost like a little Drew Marymore clone, that if you will. That is Alison Lohman. You know, she's only made about three films in her life, and of which this one is her main crux. She, she did an astounding job in this. She, she earned her paycheck in this movie. Absolutely. And if you actually, you know, this film is not only a bit of a comedy, uh, just There's the norm is in this humor. film. There is a comic edge to this film. However, at the same time, uh, we have certain segments there concerning this old woman who puts a hex upon her. She puts a, a whole thing on this lady right here. And uh, I, I think it's incredible. I just, uh, I love segments of this. I, it's, uh, the ending is a little, <laughs> I guess, I guess it is, you know, it is what it is. But regardless, I'm very fond of this film and I've watched it uh, quite a few times. It's a very memorable movie. It's, it's a lot of fun. A it's a fun looking. horror it film. It really is a fun one. It's very entertaining. You can watch this with Grandma, and, uh, you know, and if Grandma has a lot of money in her will, uh, you know, she may die and pass out through this film, and then, of course, you'll be able to it's collect possible. your fortune. But, but this, uh, this film really is quite uh, this it, it's entertaining. This actress some things in this film. And this film, girl, my incredible. God. You know, she, she had to do certain trooper. segments. Like, Sam Raimi would say to her, okay, today we're going to pour maggots in your mouth. And they did. They had to put live worms into her mouth Popeye. while she'd be laying there for a dream sequence that she you did. You know, back in the day, this I girl went through something like that. Truly. I woke up one day full of maggots in my mouth. I fell asleep in a dumpster, but that's another story. Oh, it's not a pleasant experience. Oh, that's quite horrifying. No, when you're sleeping on a pillow, but it turns out to be a stack of baby diapers that fell out of a diaper genie. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, did we really have to go there? I wanted to tell you that it story. really debased. The whole very essence of our show. We want, but it is what you are. You do these things. We want a variety of things. <laughs> <laughs> but Drag Me to Hell, I recommend it to you. I do love it's it. It's definitely the it's most great fun. fun you'll have watching Look the Look at that shot film. right there. That's the essence of the film. And it's if you just, like Sam Raimi's other films, you'll here. like Drag Me it to really Hell. It really is. It's entertaining. It's constantly just gets into your blood and it just, and it sucks the very life out of you. And, uh, and it's one of those films that you'd like to come back to and watch again. I would agree 100%. And I have done that uh, about three or four times now. Well, thank they you recently telling. came out with, I believe, the 20-year anniversary. It can't be 20 years. No, the film was 2009. Oh, so it it's was It's not only, even uh, 10 years uh, old. So it's only a seven year. Your brain year. is mush. It's the seven-year anniversary, and it's quite... Uh, I loved it. I really do. And there's all kinds of extra interviews with our little girl there, and Sam Raimi. And there's Sam Raimi, the director right there. Sam right, right over there. Hard at work, crafting I'm sure his, his brother is there with him. Uh, Ted, uh, Co-directing. What's his... Ted Raimi? Is that his name? I believe it's Ted, yes. yes He's I, in the film, too. Yes, Briefly. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Oh, you know who's in this film that I discovered I had forgotten? Who? A pre-Oscar, Octavia Spencer plays one of her co-workers in the bank. Oh, that's quite correct, in the yeah. bank. Oh, yes, indeed. I thought that was entertaining to uh, see yes, her there. very much so. But uh, anyway, we're going to move on. We can. To a film that I, I can say that I love. I love <clears throat> this oh, my, film. My God, no. 2012, Chained. It's uh, a film directed by Jennifer Lynch. I know it well. David Lynch's I daughter. I recommended it to you. You told me about this film. And I'm very happy that I went out and I found this movie. Yes. It is a disturbing oh, life very sick. of a serial killer. Vincent D'Onofrio. He plays a cab driver. He who does. abducts his victims, brings them to his home. He's a serial killer. And in this movie, he takes a young boy 
and he makes him live with him for several years, literally chained up in this long chain throughout the entire house. How long is it? Many miles long. I don't know how long it is. How long, long is it? It's long. long. It's, well, it's long enough that he can get to the bathroom and get to the kitchen and bring uh, Vincent a beer when exactly. he needs to be. But this film is so well acted. These two actors, the main boy, when he grows up to be an adult, his name is Amon Fallon. No, Amon Farron. He's the actor. Yes. And uh, Vincent D'Onofrio just does an amazing job in this film, playing one of the sickest characters that I can remember seeing in quite a long time. I must say this. One of the things about this film that, that most assuredly, he almost looks like Vince Vaughn sitting right there, just a captured on a DUI. just got arrested, On by his the way. DUI, yeah. DUI shot where he's smiling him. profusely. However, uh, one of the things that always sticks with me is the remnants of the victims. And in this particular film, we have moments here where Vincent will literally not, uh, he'll go through the driver's licenses of the women that he yeah. has murdered sick. and killed. And there is such absolute, you know, we, we then begin to realize that victims have such a, a history behind them. And what happens to that history? Very often they're discarded into lakes and deserts and burned and things. But in this particular film, uh, we see those physical remnants. And, and that, to me, was more disturbing than, than anything to Him some extent. Him and the boy sit there and they the, play trivia with the information on the exactly. driver's licenses. And the characterizations in this do. film, directed by Jennifer Lynch, David's daughter. Yes. Uh, she did a great job in this I movie. I thought it's fantastic. Uh, she also did a movie with Sherilyn Fenn called uh, Something in a Box. Boxing Helena. Boxing Helena. She did. Back I'll in the be 90s. a boxing Helena today. Sung to the tune of Dancing Matilda, and if you would. And that film was controversial because Kim Basinger dropped out, and then the studio was suing her for breach of contract. Right. But uh, the she, film, I do believe, was finished by her, No. I'm sorry? The film was not finished by Jennifer Lynch, Boxing Helena? Yeah, no, 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 she did the film. I'm saying Kim Basinger was the original star. Oh, correct, yes. And she, she was dropped sued. out. She yeah, was she sued, was sued for like a million dollars. It was only an oral contract yes. that they had with Kim Basinger, but they sued her anyway. You think that oral contract was with the male producer? I don't know. It might have been Harvey Weinstein. You uh, never no. know. I hope for oh, her Oh, my God. Wasn't. But I'm psh, but I'm psh. But, uh, yeah, it's a very effective horror film. It truly is. It's, it's frightening. It's shudderingly. It, of all the films we've discussed today, Definitely. this is probably the most disturbing. I would say so. And I the most agree. frightening to the guts of your soul. I agree. When I watched it, I was riveted to this movie. You cannot stop. I loved it. You cannot stop. It's so well acted. I know. And the direction is so... It's so precise and it's, subtle. It's claustrophobic. Claustrophobic. It took the words out it, of my mouth. It's claustrophobic. It's it's so intense. It's so absolutely rivetingly frightening. Uh, it's a I movie agree. that will... N and, and I don't recommend this film to everyone. And I'll tell you why. Because it will not leave your psyche very soon. In fact, if ever, yes. you will remember this movie and not in a good way. I in a agree. frighteningly horrific way for probably the rest of your silly life. It's, it's, it's etched in my Which memory, if, that's for If sure. it's up to me, it will not be that long. Let me tell you. Right there. Because I'm coming for you all. Oh, damn very, it. Very bleak pronunciation. I'd like to mention something. Belinda Carlisle, wherever you are, I'm sick of hearing that heaven on earth song when I walk into every damn supermarket. Oh, love it is a place on earth. Oh, heaven is a... No, it's not. Hell is a place on earth. And I, Bob Dylan, knocking on hell's door, you should be. The this. hell is the matter with that? And Maurice Chevalier, thank heaven for little girls. No, little girls have come from hell. Now, I agree with your sentence, ah. but I must say I'm very surprised that you do your own food shopping. I you do don't, indeed. You don't have little minions to do that for you? Oh, God, no. They you always get the wrong things. Children. I have to go myself. You're very particular I about like your to pick out my and your own avocados. green peppers. They always get the soft green peppers. Yes. I like them to be hard and firm. Yes. I like them to be very hard so that I can cut them and chew them. So you don't like any flaccid fruit? I, I, is there a flaccid fruit? Yes. Many. They one. A banana that's past its prime. <laughs> it loves to I think you just apart. described your whole being. I did. But I have to disagree. But I, hate, is... you know what I, hate? I hate flaccid bacon. I want my bacon to be well done.
<laughs> God bless you, I don't my want friend. a flaccid when it's like this. And I will shake your hand for that I one. want well done bacon. I agree. When I hold it, I want it to shatter. It should be crispy. Crispy. I don't want it limp. No. No, forget about limp Nobody bacon. Nobody wants limp Give bacon. Give me that crispy bacon. We want crispy bacon. I want it crispy in fact. I don't want it burned, though. Not burnt. I but don't like crispy. it burnt. crispy. I just like it. And I like the little edges on the top of the bacon to be a little fatty. That would be okay. So that the centerpiece of the bacon itself is firm, but not burnt. There's something about burnt. I mean, listen, where I live, I know. everything, everything is, burnt. is well done. Everything is you burnt. You can't get a raw steak, can you? I can't even get anything raw. Oh. And, and it's a, it's a, it, it just hurts me to the core. Oh. So give I me my damn guys. bacon. That's all I ask. So this has been oh, bacon God, banter. I'm so horny today. Next week we'll have a different conversation point. I doubt it. So but let banter. us move on. Do we have any more films to we discuss, do. or should we just talk about bacon for the rest of the night? I think we killed that horse. I don't know. Uh, I think that's a. Now speaking of horses, uh, no. Uh, we're going to do a film that I know. That's a glue factory. We don't need to go exactly. into. Exactly. I heard that you like a film called Mama, 2013's Mama, <laughs> produced by Guillermo del Toro. Say that again. Mama. 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 Uh, you know, uh, I, I love the film because the beauty and luxurious and a woman who I just adore, Miss Jessica Chastain. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, she plays kind of a tattooed punk rocker in this. She's wonderful. And, you know, I love, I love me a good tattooed punk rocker. I really do. That's a very and I just niche love Jessica. Love. She's a love. She's a beauty. She's, she's a very great. wonderful, talented um, actress. I did sign her soul recently. She will be visiting me upon her demise. Oh no! Oh yeah, she's mine. Are oh, you yes. excited oh, no, about no, that? No, no, she's mine. I wanted her. I got her. Did you do I a... gave her her career. Uh, Listen, she's a she's a superstar now. That's right. Oh, so that was she can thank this me for that. She didn't get that on her own merit. No, she, God, no. She had to submit no, to you. Please leave God out of this. That's no, too bad. She got it from me. She signed a little contract. Her soul is history. Congratulations. It's done. On, it's uh, finished. It's gone. Congrats on Led Zeppelin, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. You did much. a good job with that well, one. Well, Alistair Crowley's a good friend of mine. I know he is. And, you know, he and Jimmy were, were always tight. And, of course, Jimmy bought his mansion there in, in Cornshire or Leconshire or, was it, or Chipwees or Manchester say, or Oxford or one of those bloody places. Did you places. say Cornshire? No, I, don't, I don't like uh, Yes, yeah. Well, uh, when I was in, uh, when, I, when I saw Sharp Aquitic, I did have some corn chowder. How was it? It was quite tasty. But, uh, you know, there was something about the uh, Capecni sauce. The Mary Jo Capecni uh -huh. sauce. Yes. It was very untasty. Yeah. So let us move on. What is our next film? We just started reviewing Mama. Oh, yes, Mama. It's a pretty well, good movie. Well, of course, uh, Guillermo del Toro. He produced it. He, he did didn't produce it. the film. There is that feeling of Guillermo. Yes. Uh, this it, was directed it, by, uh, his name is Andy Muschetti, who did the, re the recent film adaptation of Stephen King's It. Oh, and he's doing him? the sequel. Oh. No. Yes. Well, it was quite good. <coughs> Excuse I me. I enjoyed it. What's the matter? Frog in your throat? Yes, a little bit. Uh, well, I'm a maybe, little patched. Did you chip a tooth, perhaps? And... Uh, no, I, I choked on a lizard. Oh, uh, well, well, there you go. Uh, but, you know, this film also stars uh, Nikolai Costa Waldo. Who? who Nikolai Costa Waldo, who plays... I can't understand a word you say, my Nikolai friend. Nikolai Costa Waldo. Wait, let me do this for you. Now say it. Nikolai Costa Waldo. <laughs> okay, there plays, you go. On Game of Thrones, he plays Jamie Lannister. Oh, there he is. That's oh, him. yes, yes, he is in this film. He's very good. He's quite good. Uh, I loved Mama, actually. There's a whole backstory about an orphanage and a young girl who well, they is... they have some nieces that come to stay with them. A mother who is the mother of children, etc. I'm going to get comfortable. Uh, you know, there's another great little film also out there, and I would have liked to have talked about this today, but I'm going to mention it briefly. It's also a Guillermo del Toro uh, production. It's called The Orphanage. Yes. It's a really wonderful little film. We have no picks for it, so don't go searching. All those you down in the lower depths uh, of where the Morlocks live. If the I knew people you were going to bring it up, of, I could have included the, the photo. Well, you could have, but it's, not, it's too late now, it's isn't it? It's too late. But uh, I do love uh, the orphanage. But uh, let's talk about Mama. It's uh, the true star of this is the creature of Mama, who is the. There it is, right there. There she is, right there. Now that's actually an actor, believe I it know. or not. CGI effects, uh, quite good. You know, one of the things about films, and of course these days on Blu-rays and discs, etc., is that we are able to go in and see the making of these films. That's Big correct. mistake. That's right. Just sit there on your high horse and leave those extras alone. You know, you know that, why? Because they ruin the film for you every time. I believe time. that actor that did that... Uh, He's like eight feet tall. He, his, na his name is here. It's, it's Javier Botet. God bless you. And he also 
He also did the um, the creature that we see in The Conjuring Part 2. Really? Yes, which we will be touching on in oh, a few yes. minutes. Uh, well, I've touched on my own conjuring uh, every once in a while. And, Please. You know, I've got to conjure something, uh, you know. <laughs> Just Listen, man does not fire? live by, uh, you know, death alone. But uh, let me talk about Mama. I like this film a lot. I uh, like it too. I did go back and watch it again, though, recently. I found it to be... I didn't enjoy it as much the second and third time. You've probably seen it a hundred times. Who are we No, kidding? I've only seen it about three. But I did love it the first time. Uh -huh. I believe I saw it in the theater. I think you did. I'm not sure, but it's hard for me to say. It's hard for you to remember what was going on in 2013. As Johnny Mathis once said, It's not for me to say chances are. Because you know, right over here, we have Johnny Mathis and little Topo Gijo. Was I'm sorry, Ed, you know, Ed these Ed are Sullivan all people whose souls I have taken over the years. Was that Ed Sullivan? That was Ed, yes. Interesting you, know, you had him introducing you know, right Johnny over Mathis. Here, okay, we have four young uh, guys from Liverpool. Right over here. That's pretty good. All right, there you go. That's an admirable impression of Ed Sullivan. Uh, well, thank you so much. It's always appreciated to be told by a walking corpse that you do a good impression. So. I remember people. I thank you, Mr. Lord of the Slums. So anyway, let it's us move on. It's my pleasure to congratulate you. Uh, what is our next film? Uh, yes, moving on. We are going to do our oh, film that's wonderful. 2014's The Babadook. Oh, The Babadook. This ah. is an Australian now this is a film. horror film. Near and dear to my soul, it's to my heart. It's very clever. It's a very well done The film. way that they do the monster is very clever to me. Uh, very good. Very uh, well and, done. Uh, there are subtleties within this film that, that <clears> are very... You have to pay very close attention. Uh, it's about a young girl. She finds a book. Uh, a young boy, forgive me, uh, who has a book that he's fond of, and the book very slowly uh, begins to come to life. The monster within Indeed. the book. That is the book. Uh, and the mother, of course, in this, it's basically about a psychological breakdown that she personally is going through. We don't know what is real, what is not. But uh, the little boy in this film is brilliant. He's excellent. My God. I want his soul. His name I is... want the very essence of his person. I want his signature his name on my skin. Is... Uh, contract. His name I is Noah. take him forever because he's a brilliant actor. I just want to say his name because I believe in credit. His name is Noah Wiseman. What is it? Noah Wiseman. Uh, what are you saying, Miller? Noah, as in Noah's Ark. <laughs> Noah. Wait, now say it. Don't touch my person. I can't understand what you're saying. I'm being very clear. His name is Miller. Noah. Noah. Miller. Noah. Noah. Miller. Noah. Like Noah. Miller, like Noah's Ark, Noah. Oh, Noah. Noah. Oh, well, how the hell is anybody supposed to recognize that? Because you're being obtuse with your hearing. Don't you have some way to put that microphone up it's your arse? Noah and then you can Weisman. talk through your ass like you've been doing all show. I, think you're I can't just understand not, a word you're saying. You're just not listening. Oh, for God's sakes, I can't make it out. Oh, you're full of shit. So what's his name? Noah. I'm not saying it again. So, there's an arc here. Yes. Get it? Yes. Noah's arc. That's what I said four times. Oh, for God's sake. You're a plagiarist. Ladies and gentlemen. You're a plagiarist. I can't believe my eyes. But yes, The Babadook. Oh, my God. Uh, this film is on Netflix. It's been on Netflix for about a year now, probably. I bought the Blu-ray. I love this film. It's just a brilliant manifestation. And it's frightening as hell. It's very good. It is. I should say frightening is heaven, because hell to me is my home. I know it and is. And I'm endeared to it, and I love hell. It is where I live, it is what I do. So you don't long for a cool climate ever? A what? You don't ever long for a cool climate? A cool climate, is that what yes, you're saying? Yes, you don't ever you don't long for that? Uh, well, you know, with global warming as it is, and I've been living on Earth now, uh -huh. so... Hell, oh, heaven is a place on Earth. Yeah, Belinda Carlisle, I'm coming for you! Go, go, go to hell! But anyway... I thought she was part of the Bengals. No, 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 no. That's Susanna Hoffs. She was the head girl of the Bengals. You know, I get confused with I believe she was having a little bands. affair with Prince there because they had just another Manic Monday. Ah, uh -huh. that's my fun day. Ah, uh -huh. I know. <laughs> oh, please forgive me as I play an imaginary ukulele there. But, you know, Prince had uh, one major song. He had When Doves Cry at number one. And yes. he had Manic Monday at number two back in 1986 or so. He so, was an extraordinary talent. But Belinda Carlisle was with the Go-Go's. Okay. You know, our lips are set. We got the beat. We got the beat. You got you my know, foot our shaking lips are here. sealed and we got the beat. And there was an old joke. Why can't the Go-Go's have any children? Why? Because their lips are sealed. Uh, but I'm... 
Terrible. But there you go, folks. Um, but anyway. But uh, back to the Babadook because the we're Babadook. digressing. Uh, your feelings? Sir? I think it's a fantastic film. It's a very different, very inventive type of horror film. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed it. The performance is a tough match. Fantastic. The woman there. She's very good. She's brilliant. Oh, uh, damn it. Her name is Essie Davis. She's wonderful. And she's excellent. Uh, has she done she anything totally else? She totally sells this. Has she done anything else? I'm sure she has. I did not have a moment to look her up. <laughs> what are you doing over there? Because <laughs> I can barely understand a word you're saying. I don't know. It sounds good to me. Well, thank God that I hope the people at home and I hope those wonderful folks there who aren't really there tonight... I hope that they can hear you. Well, somebody's watching. Good evening from France. Yeah, that's only been there for the last I hour and a half. I know it has. It's been there for about 25 minutes. No, it's been there for about an hour and a half. It, has it was there before we got here. Are you sure? I'm positive. Oh, bollocks. Oh, yeah, take a look at the, the, the time. Yeah, it, it happened in 1928. There's Good no evening time from stamp. France. It's been there for years. I don't think it has. You were just a small little lord of, of scum before no. you became the I lord of the slum. I was a lord of the trash heap. Uh, very and now well. I'm the slumlord. Well, all right. Anyway, um, I guess we'll move on. If you'd like. We're going to move on now to the final film of our horror discussion. We hinted at it earlier. The Conjuring 2. Ah. Directed by James Wan. Correct. Who did the first one. Well, he also did a Insidious. little film. Uh, uh, he's done the Saw films. He did. He's been related to almost all of them. The yes. first one, notably. And yes. then he did a little movie, uh, which was about, uh, was it magic? No, it was... Uh, what was that one about the dolls in a room? Uh, dark magic? Was it dark? Oh, yes, he did it here. I have it written down. Uh, Dead Silence? Dead Silence. Yes. Oh, I love that film. Yes. That's a scary little movie. I right? have not seen that one. Oh, it's luscious and wonderful, and it makes me uh, cry with delight ah. at the very thought. It's, it's quite, uh, quite tasty, but James is wonderful. But this movie, uh, I've seen it uh, three times now. It's uh, very the, creepy. I also want to tell you that there is an off spin coming. There is a character within this, the nun. The nun. Horrifying. Ain't got none, can't get none, don't, don't want, want none. Well, she's got her own little film coming out very shortly. Can we show the nun? It's wonderful. They just showed her, I oh, think. Oh, I missed it. Uh, maybe I missed it, too. But that nun is horrifying. That's Patrick Wilson. My Patrick God. Wilson. We have Vera Farmiga. That's Francis O'Connor right there. There's a scene in the actual room. Yes. That Vera Farmiga goes into within her own oh, house. Oh yes, in and the office. Is done. My God. Yes. It was frightening. It was. It was beyond. It's frightening. absolutely my terrifying. My testicles literally flew into the upper respiratory system of my own person. That nun as is I so grimaced scary. with horror yeah. at that nun. There's the nun. God. Horrifying. There she is. Oh, my God. Please. So horrible. Ladies and gentlemen, and, and people of, of little or no consequential brain scan, do not see this film. It will terrorize you. I kid you not. I love the whole thing. We have two almost separate stories going on. We have the behind story yes. with Vera and Patrick. Yes. And they've come from another uh, very serious The Conjuring One, of course. Correct. Which is great with Rob something or other is in there. Rob Livingston and there Lily you go, Taylor. I presume Rob yes. Livingston. And Lily Taylor. But uh, I'll tell you, I love this film uh, taking place in a British home as it does. It's, it's quite wonderful and, and scary. Did you find yeah, it scary? I thought it was very scary. Shades of the Sixth Sense with that little train little bit. coming out of the tent. Yeah, yeah, Remember that yes, little yes, 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 you're right. Same kind of thing. Uh, uh, and the whole, very there's frightening. There's, there's so many scenes in this film that are unsettling. Yeah, really, much so. so. When the little girl begins to become possessed. Oh, it goes into the Linda uh, Blair world. Yeah, yeah it's, it's uh, frightening. It's indeed. very well done. Yeah, absolutely. James Wan really did a good job with this movie. It's and most horror times. films are not longer than an hour and a half. Of this course, is we almost saw, two and a half. We saw with our opening film, Hereditary, a two hour and seven minute film. Yes. And of course, The Conjuring is about two hours and 15 minutes. It, I it is, yes. And worth every moment. I it's love great. this film. I thought Beer from Ego was excellent. Patrick excellent. Wilson was excellent. How about when they're going down into the basement? Oh, and into it's the flooded. Water? Yes. Oh, God, that was fantastic. Horrifying. It stuff. really was horrifying. This is a brilliant It's piece really of well work. done. Go back and check out their characters. Uh, and I love the opening. They're at the Amityville Horror yes, House. Yes, yes, yes. And they're walking through. Kaboom! Shotguns That going was off. cool. Oh, my God. It was incredible. That was a very, very good it's scene. It's a film within a film within a film within a film. It's a brilliant little piece of work. I would agree 100%. Absolutely. I was really uh, taken aback by this movie. I was surprised at how much I enjoyed it. Absolutely. I was really Perhaps into your it. Horror, your horror genitals yes. are beginning to be sucked into the void there. You, you know that, that is horror. This is 
one of those movies where you know that there's a jump scare coming. You don't know when it's going to come. I know. But you know it's coming. And when it does, you are unsettled. You're, you're disturbed. You're, you're crawling in your seat. Very much so. I was up till 3.30 in the morning watching so. this film. You know, I look so wonderfully handsome today. I like in, that in my, in outfit my, very in much. In my priestly outfit. I had to murder a, a priest for this outfit. But he, oh, that's not nice oh, of you. it was all right. He didn't mind. Maybe it was one of the priests from The Keepers. Pardon me? Maybe it was one of the priests from The Keepers. Oh, may, oh that would be pl a pleasure, I, actually. I hope it Dr. was. Dr. Magnus or well, the other guy. Magnus or whatever his name was. We don't remember his name. He sucks. Why not? Merrick. Merrick? Ah, Merrick. Yeah, no, like, uh, like, like Merrick the from The Exorcist. Or like the Parkway? No, The Exorcist. Do D Merrick, Dr. Merrick. He was the I one who came was in. Was that it? And, uh, yeah, he dies. Uh, Linda Blair kills him. That's right, she does. Uh, horrible. What about old Merrick? What's he doing these days? I think he's out on archaeological digs, that's what I think. Yes. There you go, in The Exorcist, of course. But, uh, yes, uh, uh, wonderful stuff, though, I have to say. The Conjuring 2, I'm so grateful that you loved it. Yes. Uh, you can also do a cross-lateral jump in the James Wan world and go over to Insidious. He did that, too. He did Insidious also. Before that this. starts Patrick Wilson <coughs> and Rose Byrne. Rose Byrne. And uh, I'll tell you something, that little Rose, boy, what a, what a wonderful She's girl. She's uh, very lovely. I'd like to get her signature on a nice piece of uh, roast beef. You know what I'm saying? Yes. She's a wonderful girl. Uh, I just love her. She and Bobby uh, Van Cannavale. Cannavale. Whatever. What'd you say? Bobby Cannavale. Yeah, if only someone could understand what you're saying. They have a child together. And I do believe they did. But important it is not. However, uh, let's talk about Insidious very briefly. Insidious is a film. You have no pictures there. So, young Gabriel, if you are searching for those pictures, please. Uh, find something else to I do. I didn't know uh, you were going to make Because there is nothing, no photos there for you to search. However, within Insidious, they promise you Satan. Of course, I'm being an enactment of my own being. Yes. But they promise you the devil, and they deliver the goods. They give you the devil. I mean, they literally, this old woman who is now a part of, she's now in Insidious 4, the key. I love the Insidious You mean the series. last key? Ah, uh, pardon me? The last key? It may have been the last key. The last key, last. Was it the last? As in final, last. The what? Last. Could you muddle that again, please? Last, last, like last, like final, last. Oh, for God's sake, somebody give this man a respirator so he can talk. You know why you can't hear me? Because your ears are covered, that's why. What? Yeah, no, it's you because can't hear your me. mouth is covered. If you just could talk. Hey. Get off I my person! I hear what you're saying! How dare you attack oh, me! Oh, for God's sake! How dare Ladies you molest me! You'll see what I must put I'm on. being molested by the devil! Is that right? This is my me too moment! Oh, very well, very well. Let us pray. Let us pray. Please do! This is when you should burst into flame! No! Oh, God! Oh, very well. Are you done? Are you I finished? I'm done. We can't be done, because Dunn's in Philadelphia. No, Dunn's in Ohio. Is that a place? Yeah, Dunn is a place. I've never heard Dunn, of it. Dunn, Ohio. Yes. Never been? Yes, it's right next to Balls Falls, I believe. Ah, yes. Oh, heavens. Yeah, OK. Do you mind putting this on again for again, me? Again, you! You I, I, and If we're going to be talking... Your broadcast incompetence. I, 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 I may need this. Broadcast incompetence here. Yeah. I'm going to put it on the button. How about that? Thank you so much. There we go. Very nice. Oh, yes. I do hope I... But anyway, I... I think we've come to the final moments of our show here. You know, I think people will be relieved because we've been screaming through the whole show. You know, it's just the nature of these characters that we've created. These, these people uh, are you very know, boisterous. We are boisterous. We do have a tendency to scream, however. I do believe that we probably overloaded these mics so often so that when I would drop my mic upon my floor, I would very much assume that the buzzing and that the static electricity created by my constant screaming would literally go away and that now my volume would be at a proper I, ratio. I, I guess I do sympathize for the viewers oh, of yes. their eardrums the powers that be for this hour. Whatever they may be. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to bid you adieu. We, uh, but it has been a are... pleasure to share our thoughts with you on this horror episode. Yes, We indeed. hope you enjoyed it and uh, we hope you'll seek out some of these films for yourself. 
Yes, indeed. And uh, we will see you next week for more of this hilarity. And, Unless uh, we're preempted, one never knows where we're going next well, week. Well, next week they might be doing a live stream. Of, we uh, might be doing a live stream from, uh, a, a from, room being from painted, uh, perhaps? McDonald's in Hasbro Heights. It's a chance, yes. You never know where we're going to be, so you're just going to have to look up your local listings. But and please just go to the elevator and make sure that there time, is a floor there. Otherwise, you shall drop down to the bottom and die and be along with myself. So Our normal time slot, though. Uh, we 7 30 on tuesday evenings uh, that right is here true, but, on uh, twitch slash as we all know there is no god so we we never speak, know where we're going to speak appear. for yourself so very true indeed so with that uh, we, we do will see you next week though you know we're quite a, we're a few minutes short of an hour however it's 501 yeah i know but we started at about uh 404 today is that true it is well do you so want to just babble about here and we can for talk about uh, anything you like what would you like it's to up talk? to you well, we should talk about uh, movies to come. Well, now, of I course, believe, Ocean's 8, we that, that did was not the, go see. That was the box office hit of the weekend. I know. Steven Soderbergh, of course, did the t Danny Ocean. This is uh, Danny's sister. Uh, sister. His sister. Played by Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock. And uh, I always love Sandra. Me too. Big I fan. really big do. Fan. I think I've been she's a big wonderful. fan since Speed. Pardon me? I've been a big fan since Speed. Oh, I thought you were saying that you like Speed. Well, that's a different thing altogether. I enjoy a little Speed myself. Uh, thank you. You yes. don't need anything to make yes, you faster. Yes, I've allowed my eyes to envision the world. Oh, my and goodness. I put want them to back put up. away my mirrored lenses just for a moment. So, so I have that sort of a, a Batman-ish kind of cowl thing going on. You'd like yes, that? Your chin and girdle notice, is doing well. Notice, could you get a side shot here, please? His chin girdle. Notice the chin girdle. That's right. It's wonderful. Notice as I tap it. Yeah. Let me tap it. Could you like to tap it? Go ahead. Yes, that's right. The chin girdle. Ladies and gentlemen, this particular chin girdle is available to your local chin girdle shop. Girdle, that chin you girdle can go down, down. I believe it's in Ridgewood, New Jersey. It might be. There is a chin girdle shop, and you may wish to go down and check it out. So, uh, sometimes I would do a bit of a turkey gobble. Uh -huh. Myself and Clint Eastwood and uh, Matthew Perry, <laughs> we'd all Perry. get together and we'd Indeed. do our frog. Look at that wonderful close-up of your chin Oh, my God. How horribly Look frightening. Look at that thing. You know, I've got to say something. Uh, looking at my chin right there and looking at, at, at uh, Christian Bale wearing the Batman gown. You're right. There you is know, a resemblance. You know, <laughs> really. Because yeah. his, his chin really didn't quite fit in the mask properly. Uh-huh. The best person in the mask, I believe, might have been Michael Keaton. He was great. Michael Keaton looked great in the mask. He looked great in the Batman mask. And also... Somebody had always mentioned that Steven Seagal had like the perfect head for a Batman. Too face. bad he would not have been good at the it's role. It's too bad though. he's just, you know, such a major he's bag wood. of douche yeah. uh, that unfortunately we would not be able to get Steven within the Batman mask. But perhaps in his younger days when he was doing all those, those silly mafia movies, they were actually quite entertaining. Yes. I have to say. He made uh, some good films. He did do some I of his love day. Out for Justice. My out for favorite. Justice was good. That's and, the best. And, and and they were always Stephen Seagal is out for justice. Stephen Seagal is out for vengeance. Out for vengeance. Yeah, I know. He was Down always for Stephen Seagal is. Yeah. It's always the same. Out to get you. Fire uh, yeah, I know. It was really incredible. He did like six films. He and did. what about the movie he did on the ocean liner? Well, Under Siege. Yeah. Stephen Seagal Siege. is. Under Siege. Part two, Dark Territory. I know. I, and you then know, Fire Down Below. And now he's I'm in a new film. Uh, he's in a new film now, you just mentioned earlier. Yeah, he's doing a film that's coming out uh, very soon with Mike Tyson. Oh, God. It's called um, The Something Salesman. I forget what it is. Really? Something Salesman. Oh, okay. I think The Street Salesman. Uh, maybe The Apples and Pencils Salesman on 42nd it's Street. It's going to be there soon you know, because, because, uh, he's not careful. Uh, Stephen doesn't make too much money anymore. He was doing yeah. that drive-along cop show for a bit. Did I you ever see that, that show. I watched you it. You did? A little bit. I know, but of course, Steven Steven's a goal. Gained, he gained Long so man. much weight. Oh, my God. Oh, he's a walking uh, I mean, uh, you hippopotamus know, now. You just wanted to put an apple in his mouth and put him on a rotisserie. He let himself spin go. him around and play some Hawaiian music in the background. It's a shame. The man had grown into a gargantuan pig of a humanoid. And my God, what had become of him? I know, it's a shame. Well, you know, it's 5.05 .05 is the old clock on the wall. So says. that's an hour. I think we can sit here for another two hours and talk about absolutely nothing. That's true. What do you think? But we're not going to. Well, we're not going to. Because I have to urinate. Oh, you do? I think it's ah, coming soon. The power of the bladder, my friend. No, I'm kidding. I don't. But I think it's time to go. All right, very well. So we, we're going to bid you adieu now. We will see you all next week. We'd like Same to say time, adieu to you and you Tuesday and night. you. 
do and you to you and you and you who da 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 But anyway, anyway, let's end this well, program, all right, friends, we? we leave you now. We we'll bid you adieu week. to you and you and you. So Check good day, good night, take care. We love you all, damn it. And yes, I'm still horny for you all. As you can very well see, notice they have never gone down or settled. They're still in sprinkling? a very high perched. Uh, 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 it's because you're sprinkling Viagra oh, there on your you head. Go. Well, you know, as long as I don't ejaculate anywhere, <laughs> I suppose I'm in good condition. I'm going to chill So with that, we seeds. say goodbye to you all until next week. Uh, or whenever they decide to let us uh, continue. So we thank you all You think this is a good look for me? And good night. Well, yeah, I'm going to go now. Yeah, Mr. Stewart,